Hello and welcome students in the other floors of this video. I am Leman Abde from Mandula University. In my previous video of lesson 32, I have discussed about diseases which are diagnosed by serological techniques. Today I will proceed lesson 33. In this lesson, I am going to discuss about typhoid fever and typhus. Typhoid fever and paratyphoid fever are diseases which are caused by Salmonella typhi and Salmonella paratyphi respectively. When you see their severity, typhoid fever is more severe and fatal illness, whereas paratyphoid fever is a mild infection. The bacteria Salmonella has two important antigens. These are O antigen from somatic or cellul of the bacteria and H antigen from flagell of the bacteria. When the bacteria enter with these two antigens, the host body produce or synthesize anti-O and anti-H antibodies. And by detecting these antibodies from the serum of the patient, we can diagnose the disease typhoid fever. The terms typhoid and enteric fever are commonly used to describe uh, the disease which are caused by Salmonella typhi and Salmonella paratyphi. Summary question, what are the advantages of O and H antigens for serological techniques? The disease typhoid fever can be acquired by ingesting salmonella typhi with contaminated food and water. After 8 to 14 days of incubation period, the patient shows high fever, headache, abdominal pain, and other signs and symptoms. Laboratory diagnosis. Uh, the bacteria salmonella typhi can be easily cultivated on artificial culture media by collecting samples from blood, faces, urine, and bone marrow. Blood culture is the gold standard method which gives a true diagnosis of the disease. We can also use serological techniques including uh, ELISA and WIDAL. And we can also use a polymerase chain reaction if it is available. WIDAL test. The viral test is a commonly used uh, serological technique uh, to diagnose typhoid fever, especially in developing countries. Uh, it is easy, rapid, and inexpensive uh, technique uh, which is used uh, when uh, techniques or uh, facilities for culturing bacteria are not available. With this technique, the efficient serum is tested uh, or uh, examined to detect the presence or absence of anti-O and anti-H antibodies which are uh, produced as a response of O and H antigens uh, by mixing with uh, antigen suspension in the laboratory. Summary question in viral test what are the antibodies detected uh, from serum? Viral test there are two types uh, of methods of viral techniques these are uh, rapid slide test method and tube agglutination method. Rapid slide test is a qualitative test. Qualitative means detecting only the presence of the substance. And this technique, one drop of serum and one drop of reagent will be mixed on a clean dry slide. Then if there is antibody, uh, there will be reaction or the reaction will be observed. Summary question, in this test, uh, the reagent contains A antibody, B antigen, it is very easy question. What is the difference between uh, qualitative and quantitative test? Qualitative test is a type of test which is used to check the presence or absence of the substance and we report as positive or negative. We cannot determine the amount of substance in this technique. The second one is quantitative test. Quantitative me test means uh, determining or measuring the amount of the substance which is found in the sample. For example, blood glucose can be reported as 109 milligram uh, per deciliter. This means there is 100 milligram of glucose in one deciliter of blood. Sometimes we can uh, estimate the amount of the substance uh, by using semi-quantitative method. This is a partial determining of uh, the amount of the substance uh, to uh, report uh, 
partial amount of the substance. For example, urine protein can be reported as plus 2 or plus 3. And uh, in serial dilution, if there is a reaction at 1 into 320, the titer will be reported as 320 titer. Summary question, explain qualitative and quantitative test. Materials and reagents to perform wider test. These are the reagents required to perform uh, wider test, uh, O antigen, uh, positive control, negative control, and H antigen. To perform this uh, procedure, we add one drop of uh, serum on the first uh, ring one drop of serum on the second uh, ring, and we add O antigen and H antigen. Then we mix, and after two minutes, we read the presence uh, or absence of agglutination. Uh, H is for uh, H and H are for uh, paratyphal fever. This is for uh, negative control, and this one is for positive control. So after two minutes, we observe the reaction. If there is a reaction, we report are as reactive. Sometimes weakly reactive, strongly reactive will be uh, used. So reactive means typhoid fever positive, and reactive means typhoid fever negative. The second method is tube agglutination method. It is a semi-quantitative method uh, to uh, determine or partially determine the amount of antibody. In this technique, uh, the serum will be diluted serially from 1 into 20 up to 1 into 5120 according to the number of the tubes. 1 into 20 means one, uh, one part serum and 19 part uh, diluent. 1 into 5120 means one part uh, serum and 5119 uh, diluent for both anti-O and anti-H antibodies. So after dilution, we add one drop of antigen and uh, one drop of antigen and one drop of uh, H antigen uh, for both uh, series. After uh, adding of or uh, after mixing the antigens, we incubate for a certain period of time. This is serial dilution. Uh, the tubes will be placed like this. And we have a serum and this tube and 0.1 uh, ml of serum will be transferred to the next. And after this, after mixing, we transfer 0 0.5 uh, tubes from a uh, 0.5 ml of mixture from each tube. And the last mixture uh, will be discarded. So uh, the technique is that uh, after adding the uh, reagents or the antigens, we observe the presence or absence of the reaction. If there is reaction at tube 2, tube 3, and tube 4, but not at tube 5, we report the last uh, reaction. And if there is a reaction at tube 2, tube 3, 4, and 5, but not at tube uh, 6, we report the final reaction or the final agglutination. So the titer at this uh, tube will be 80. The titer at this tube will be 160. Uh, the titer at tube 6 will be 320. This is to estimate or partially uh, determine the amount of antibody. Finally, uh, the highest dilution or titer giving agglutination reaction will be uh, reported. To interpret uh, for uh, anti-O, uh, if there is a reaction at 1 into 80 and above, it is taken as a uh, significant agglutination uh, or significant infection. For uh, anti-H, uh, 1 into 160 and above will be taken as a significant or acute infection. For O below 1 into 80, uh, agglutination or titer will not be taken as uh, significant infection. For H below 1 into 160, dilution or one, uh, below a titer of 160 will not be taken as uh, 
a significant infection or acute infection. Summary question, if the highest or the last reaction dilution is 1 into 340, what will be the titer? It is very easy question. Limitation of the test. Wydal test, not only Wydal test, uh, serological techniques have uh, limitation. These are false positive and false negative. Uh, the false negative can be due to a previous infection uh, if the patient is treated with the appropriate antibiotic. The bacteria will die, but the antibody will uh, stay or remain for a long period of time, which gives false positive re uh, reaction. The other cause of false positive is cross-reaction. Cross-reaction means uh, the antibody which is produced for other bacteria or virus will react the reagent of other uh, uh, organism or pathogen. The second uh, limitation is false negative. False negative most of the time can be seen uh, during early infection. During, uh, early infection means whenever there is no uh, enough amount of or sufficient amount of antibody. Summary question, how does previous infection cause false positive result? Second summary question, what is cross-reaction? The other uh, disease which is diagnosed by serological techniques is uh, typhus. Typhus is caused by rickettsial uh, microorganisms. These rickettsial uh, pathogens are uh, obligate intracellular uh, like virus. And based on the difference in uh, species, there are different uh, typhus infections. The first one is uh, epidemic typhus. Epidemic typhus is caused by Rickettsia prozoki and transmitted by body laws. And the disease is characterized by a high fever and body ache. Second uh, disease is murine typhus, sometimes called endemic. And it is caused by Rickettsia typhi and transmitted by rat flea. The third disease is Rot Mountain spot, uh, Spotted Fever, which is caused by Rickettsia rickettsi and transmitted by uh, uh, hard body tick. The fourth one is Typhus, which is a mite borne disease and caused by uh, Oriente Susugamush and it is uh, transmitted by mite. Laboratory diagnosis. Uh, the common laboratory diagnosis for uh, typhus disease is well felix and it is a non-specific agglutination test uh, because uh, the reagent is prepared by collecting antigen from other bacteria like protease, protease OX19, OX2, and OXK. So uh, the antibody which is produced as a response of rickettsial infection can react with uh, a reagent prepared from uh, protease uh, bacteria. Because of this, we can say that this technique is, uh, uh, or this technique uses a principle of cross reaction. Summary question Why do we say that where Felix is an unspecific test? Materials and reagents uh, or procedures uh, to uh, perform oil felix. These are OX19, OX2, OXK uh, reagents prepared from protease bacteria. When this is a procedure, one drop of serum or plasma will be mixed with reagent uh, from laboratory. Then we observe the presence or absence of agglutination after two minutes. Reaction, uh, if there is reaction, we report as reactive. Uh, if there is no uh, reaction, we report as non-reactive. And we can uh, interpret that if there is a reaction or if it is reactive, type it is typhus positive. If, it is, if there is no reaction, we report as non-reactive. And this uh, tells us typhus negative, most probably. So uh, this is all about today's presentation. Thank you for your attention.